Hi everyone and welcome back. Last winter I have been roaming around Pripyat checking various locations and at some point I decided to revisit the famous school number 3. And that place is well known for its pretty unusual shape and of course this hole full of kids gas masks laying on its floor. But in places of this kind, however, the most interesting things you can find if you go to more remote rooms. And frankly, you never know what you will discover. So on one of the shelves I found this slide film. This was made for a civil defense lessons in the end of the 70s, which back in the Cold War times were a mandatory part of a regular school program. And, you know, too ironical that things that have been teaching civilians were focused generally on a nuclear war, and when the Chernobyl disaster happened, which was very different in its nature, no one was actually prepared. So I thought that for you, who mostly have been outside the Iron Curtain, this kind of things would be pretty interesting to see, so despite the film pretty much faded away, uh, after some quick cleaning I could get the images scanned right at the place with my portable equipment. It is called Devices for Radiation Surveying and Control of Radiation Contamination and Radioactive Exposure. Before we continue, do not forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel in order not to miss future videos. Instruction is on the screen. This film has a set of commented pictures you can also find on our Patreon page along with a lot of unique Chernobyl content we translate to English. Link is in the description below. And here we go. It starts with a short introduction. The gamma rays have no charge and are highly penetrating. Passing through the medium, they ionize it, therefore they are called the ionizing rays. The ionizing effect of gamma radiation is estimated by the exposure dose measured in rangents. Well, I have to say that back then, at that time, that was the main unit you used in the Soviet Union for this, and now it's considered obsolete, but everywhere in the instructions of that time you will find only rangents. So what is the rangent? It explained that it is a, such a dose of gamma radiation at which two point 0.8 billion pairs of ions of a total charge of one electrostatic unit have been formed in one cubic centimeter of a dry air. And exposure dose rate or radiation level actually is measured in rangents per hour or millirangents per hour. On this slide we have a simple structural diagram of a generic dosimeter and below is explanation that in the receiving device under the influence of radiation an ionization current arises which passes through the amplifier and then measured by a micro ampermeter. The receiving device and dosimeters is usually a Geiger counter or an ionization chamber and that's what they look like. Well, I have to say, there also exist detectors based on scintillating crystals, but they are more for scientific purposes, and on our channel we have a few videos about devices based on scintillators, so don't forget to check them. And here, just a little bit of physics, under the influence of ionizing radiation inside the gas volume of the chamber happens the ionization of the molecules of the gas. And in the presence of the electric field, they are attracted to the electrodes of the chamber, then it creates a current, uh, that magnitude of which is used to judge the, well, the level of radiation. So, actually pretty simple. And here we have some types of pretty iconic dosimetry devices. Practically all of them had wide use in Chernobyl, so let's look closer. Well, a few of them we review it in our previous videos, such as DP3B or DP64, but some will be also in the future, so don't forget to subscribe. According to their purpose, the devices are divided into radiation reconnaissance devices and devices for monitoring of contamination of objects or people. In the bottom right corner there are also two sets of personal dosimeters exactly for the latter purpose. Back in those days, one of the main instruments for radiation surveying was the DP-63. DP-63 allows to measure radiation from 0.1 to 50 rangents per hour, and it had two sub-ranges, one up to 1.5 rangents per hour, well, not great, not terrible, and another one up to 50 rangents. The device is pretty lightweight and compact, and together with everything it was a little bit more than just one kilogram heavy. 
I had it a couple of times in my hands, well, pretty nice toy. Here it is said that from two special batteries it should work for 50 hours. Well, not bad. Then it is explained how to prepare the dosimeter for use. So as usual you need to adjust the meter to zero, then open a battery compartment and install the power cells, and then you check the batteries, but in a little bit interesting way. You have to press both subrange buttons simultaneously and the meter has to show you 10 rungeons. Then you press upper subrange button and see whether the device reacts to background radiation. The next are explanations how to use it during the work with it. So if you just walk towards the location, you should wear it on the right side so it's more accessible. And when you measure something, it had to be around one meter height from the ground level. I suggest you write me in the comments why exactly one meter. Actually, there is a scientific reason for this. Typical for this kind of analog devices, you start measuring from the highest subrange, and if it is not reacting, you have to switch to the lower one. That is because uh, if you start with the lowest one, some devices can get broken if they go out of a scale too fast. The P63 also allows to detect whether beta contamination is present. So to do this, you make two measurements with open and with the closed detector shield, and then you check the difference. Well, numbers themselves will be pretty meaningless, uh, and you know this is as we say in the zone is measuring in a chicken per hour. Uh, but the point is like if there will be difference at all. Because the difference will signal that there is in that place there is some beta source present. The next device is the P64, which is a wall-mounted monitor of contamination designed specifically to be used in fallout shelters. We review it in very details in our previous videos, and I have to say we have some cool news because that very device we recently donated to the Museum of Chernobyl in Kiev. So it will be somewhere around, just come and see it in exhibition. That's actually quite cool. As the P64 has no display or any kind of a meter, all the indication of radiation is being made using a flashing of a light bulb and a speaker that makes clicks. And on this slide, you have explanation how to test the operation of the device, similar to what we explained it in our previous video. The next device is the P3B. It's a star vehicle mounted radiometer that allows to check the contamination beneath the vehicle, and uh, it has a huge range, uh, up to very high 500 rungeons per hour. We have a detailed video about this device as well, so don't forget to check it, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe. You know, I completely love these handmade drawings. Uh, it's really beautiful, but you know, sad that covers are gone practically. Working with this device is a little bit different from a handheld one, and here is explained how to test it before you work. So first you press a rubberized button, and the meter has to show you a level between 0.4 and 0 point end rangeons uh, if the circuit is okay. But uh, when you conduct the actual measurement, you start with the lowest subrange. Uh, then you wait 30 seconds, and if the reading is out of a scale, you have to move to a higher one. It is said that the readings have to be multiplied for a shielded multiplicator that depends on the type of a vehicle or a height of a flight, uh, because the P3B can be actually also installed even on helicopters. The next device is famous DP. 5B, which many of you surely know, and these were also very widely used in Chernobyl along with similar DP5A and DP5V, a little bit different modifications. You can actually often see them very often in uh, various archive chronicles, such as this one from the very last days of a live Pripyat. It comes with a large set in a wooden box that contains the device itself, a set of detailed manuals, a power adapter, as this device can work both with the internal batteries or from a, say, car battery. And it also included a telescopic handle for the detector and the headphones. The P5B has a range from 0.05 millirangens per hour to 200 rangens per hour divided to six subranges. Actually, I have to say that this range is very practical, so even nowadays DP5 devices are still being used in some places in the zone, 
uh, where radioactive waste is processed, such as Burekivka or Pedlisny or sometimes even on Vector. The detector is equipped with a rotary shield. It has two positions, one for gamma and one for beta detection. And additionally, inside is the check source mounted inside. And inside the detector there are two Geiger tubes, C3BG and STS5. On the bottom there is a compartment for power cells. Uh, they are a little bit unusual, it's type KB1 as they were called in the USSR. And in the West they are called R12. And uh, there is a popular theory that in USSR this type was deliberately used to prevent people to steal the cells. Because R12 were never used in any kind of household devices, only in military or special ones. Well, nowadays the only relatively easy way to get R12 cells is to disassemble this kind of battery, but they are also not very common anymore, so normally those who use DP5 devices they make uh, makeshift adapters for AA cells. Alternatively, you could use a voltage adapter to connect the dosimeter to the external battery. Preparations to use here are somewhat similar to DP63, but uh, given that DP5 is already a newer generation, they are generally, let's say, user-friendly. So, to adjust zero you have a special knob and you already don't need to use a screwdriver. And the building check source allows to make a quick test. Uh, basically, on a two lowest subranges, it should go out of a scale if the device works properly. You start measurements with 200 rangens range, the highest one, and if it does not react, you switch to the lower ones. When on this highest subrange, a lower scale of a meter has to be used for readings, and upper one you use for all the others. For instance, on this picture we have the radiation level of 2 rangens per hour. On the next slide there is a very important principle explained. Uh, you know, the thing is, modern devices often automatically subtract the ambient radiation level. Uh, so this way they allow you to understand how much does a particular object you are checking emits. But with the analog devices you have to do this manually. So here it is said that first you have to make a measurement on a 15 meter distance to get the ambient level and then you come to the object having a distance of just a couple of centimeters and you get the readings from it and then you subtract one from another to get the clean value. DP5 devices also were often used to check body contamination. So here it is said that when doing that the highest attention had to be paid to unprotected parts of the body, which is pretty logical. Now the funny thing is that it was also possible to use it to measure contamination of liquids such as water or say milk. You know, I have several doubts that they will be anyway accurate, but um, when there is no specialized devices such as RKB4, this can make them in handy. By the way, we have a very good review of RKB4 radiometer designed specifically to check in the activity of liquids, so don't forget to check it. And here are also a few more hints on effective use of these DP5 devices. The last devices in this film are pretty interesting and they were really widely used during the Chernobyl disaster. These are DP22 and DP24, which are sets of personal dosimeters that allow to understand what is the dose of a particular person got. Well, they are identical, except the first one has 50 personal dosimeters in the set and the last just 5. In the box there is a special device for charging and resetting of these personal dosimeters. I have to say it's very similar to American CDV 750, but uh, built more sturdy and painted of course in a grey color. The personal dosimeters here are DKP50A, which have a form factor of a pen, they actually nickname it even this way, just a pen and they can measure the dose from 2 to 50 rangens. In reality it's a pretty complex device, uh, despite small, because they have a tiny ionization chamber powered by a capacitor, and uh, such an optical system with a scale you can look through, and this way you get the reading. So this is how you make them ready to use. Uh, you install the batteries, and then you adjust a zero using a special knob on each of the dosimeters. Well, unfortunately, I never could find a working one, as capacitors in them seems to be generally already dead after so many years. 
And this way is how do you get the readings. Well, have to say, pretty convenient. There were many other films like this about the civil defense techniques and uh, equipment, and if you wish to see more, let me know in the comments, and meanwhile, do not forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. This very film you will find as a set of pictures on our Patreon page, a link is in the description below. And this is all for today, so see you next time, stay tuned.